fellow citizens, 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 citizens. The world is very different now. Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves and welcome to the 73rd installment of last week Lolita News. At the top of the segment, the bloodbath for AP's ice cream parlor has ended with multiple casualties. The current state of affairs has the possibility of an MTO entirely up in the air. And for those of you who missed out, might I recommend my traditional method of grieving, buying the first dress to catch your eye on the secondhand market to fill the cavernous hole where your dreams used to be. That or carve out a vital organ to buy it from a scalper either is good, who am I to judge your ability to function without a brain? While we're on the subject, whatever mood stabilizers Meta's been on seem to be working as they've yet to move me to vomit in the last few months. The newest installation of their Magical Artifact series comes in charming midnight blue, their Kitten and Tulip series has cats that look to have been drawn by someone who's seen one before, and the 2020 rendition of their Sailor collection even features what appears to be a pregnant tent, which is useful if you spend your time around a lot of seafaring individuals who certainly wouldn't have the misfortune of being homophones with seminal fluid. That type of humor is just too low brow for a show that prides itself on giving human anatomy the respect it deserves, like Shamalama Ding Dong, Disco Stick, and Willy Woodpecker waxes Wily Weasel with wanton women. These terms and why I'm super problematic for saying them tonight at 10, and transitioning towards things that aren't petty slights at people who should have found a one-way street and promptly turned around, Baby the Stars Shine Bright's newest word salad translates to fairy tale herbarium trapped forever. I find that refreshingly ominous for a brand that usually likes to give some light at the end of the epic. And I especially look forward to their next release, Something Something Magic, You're All Going to Die Alone and the Illusion of Personal Choice. This allusion to our current house arrest comes in Picnic, Celery, Rapunzel, and We Won't Lose You in a Parking Lot. Also, the OP looks to have some flexibility and fit because BTSSB has the sense to know that most people have taken up respiration as more than a passing fad. Where is my fucking shirt? AP, I repeat, where is my fucking shuring? Turning towards event news, Midwest Lolita and Japanese street fashion event Paradiso has announced their postponement of their annual gala. The new dates for the event are now August 8th and 9th, 2020, and all tickets automatically roll over to the new date, no need to buy again. Meanwhile, anyone who needs a refund must ask for one before May 1st to get your money back. This has been an update on tea parties in fracking misery, a state aptly named for requiring a nine goddamned hour drive from Dallas-Fort Worth. Push your heckin' states closer if you want to be part of the civilized world, Kansas City. Why Dorothy ever left that acid trip to return to bumfuck nowhere, I will never know. Moving on to postal news, Japan has announced new shipping restrictions on a laundry list of countries as fewer flights and nationwide lockdowns obstruct international mailing routes. The list can be found in full at Japan Post's website via PDF. As Japan has temporarily suspended shipping via airmail or EMS to any country on it and the latest to be added to said list are Australia, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden as of April 10th as reported by shopping service Tenshi Shop. This has led to many shopping services offering to hold packages for customers in restricted countries and secondhand retailer Closet Child promising to hold affected customers' purchases for up to six months until the restrictions are lifted, promising to refund automatically if Japan doesn't lift their restrictions within that timeline. America is still able to get EMS and airmail packages from Japan at the time of writing this installment, but this is a daily developing situation and I don't have much confidence in fuck all at the moment. Meanwhile, as that about wraps up the week, I don't have the bandwidth for anything serious and I believe we could all use something lighthearted to stave off mass homicidal tendencies in a world where human connection means looking up someone's nose in a Zoom meeting because someone decided to position their webcam level with their crotch. We turn towards last week Lolita News next special segment, wherein this reporter says horrible things about a thinking feeling human being, people who forgot that I was a sadist promised to unsubscribe. And all in all, we can agree this exercise will prune the herd of the naive number who come from the wardrobe videos expecting me to be a decent person. Welcome to Did You Write That With A Dog's Butt? It all started in the hellhole that is Facebook group Lolita, Fairy K, Kawaii, etc. And more specifically with a post that I want to explain to you in pieces because no one has time for that wall of text and I've lost a few brain cells on the attempt. We are going to call this poor soul gibberish, gibber for short, and we begin with 
Hello girls, I think I saw before a post about the Lolita look. I know that socially is a very criticized look. I think because the people used to think is too childish or exaggerated, I am not a very loli, I am actually very discreet. Those of you who temporarily took leave of your senses to tend to a sudden stroke should know that Jibber has entered a group with Lolita in the title to say they saw a post about the Lolita look like it's a new thing, knows that it's very criticized, and imparts that they are not a quote, very loli, they are actually very discreet, a part I had to say twice because my brain tried to flee out my ear canal to parts unknown. I can only imagine that Jibber's discreet Lolita involves menacing the public in a trench coat to flash petty at unsuspecting strangers. Either way, all I can gather is that she's seen all of one post about Lolita fashion. A point that should be pertinent when she immediately promises to tell you about the perfect lolly look in all caps, followed by some indecipherable word salad on how Japanese people love European culture, which amounts to Asian European style and a random history on Lolita fashion that again is being posted in a group that has Lolita in the goddamn title. You may as well explain ice to the Eskimos before taking a hard right into saying to make the perfect lolly style you can have as reference Victorian and Rococo dresses but recreating them with light colors because some of them are dark and maybe removing the sleeves because most of the dresses have long sleeves. Which means Jibber has decreed all classic and gothic Lolitas per persona non grata, sleeves are cancelled, and apparently all of us very lollies have been doing things terribly wrong all along. Thank God his grace had the mercy to send us Caps Lock Von Balderdash or we'd still be sinning in the eyes of people who had five minutes to do a Google search and still managed a linguistic concussion. She moves on to say that this is a quote, guide to make the perfect lolly style look according to Japanese style and taste. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say she's not goddamn Japanese. And she then says she's not saying these things are rules as this fashion is a quote artistic expression and it must be free to develop and evolutionate. Now is English most definitely not Jibber's native tongue? Yes! Does that give her a free pass to explain Lolita to Lolitas like Hawaii Christopher Columbus while the very lowly natives stare open mouthed at the plague of text she's unleashed upon us all? No! And in true form of colonizers claiming to have discovered things that people already knew about, Jibber blesses us all with an example of her quote perfect lowly look because you knew this was coming and I ran out of patience in this exercise right around her saying her dress is more slim unlike most Lolita dresses with quote, why don't we try to make Lolita more sexy who doesn't like to feel attractive. She then moves on to quote, and to break the rule even more, I have mixed it with a converses, it can exist the dark lowly without being gothic, can lowly style be sexy or casual, I think lowly style can be bigger than it is right now, we need to open to expand it and make it more than just a dress with pastel colors. Colors. So just to be sure I didn't suffer an aneurysm in the last 30 seconds, this person just discovered Lolita fashion five minutes ago, has the audacity to try to give a history lesson on the entire shebang to a group with Lolita in the title, asserts that Lolita should be more sexy, says Loli 50 times for extra vomit reacts, and shows up in a getup that looks like you shoved emo kicks up the ass of a basic black dress while asserting that what Lolita really needs is to open up so it can be more than a dress with pastel colors. Let me tell you that if this is what Lolita looks like after opening up like Jebber prefers, I'm about to take a blowtorch to the goddamn exits and I say we lock this whole fashion down like fracking Italy. And any knuckle dragging entitled whiny brats that have a problem with that can go back to the clown schools you crawled out of. This fashion has standards for a reason. And if that scares you away, it's not Lolita that needs to change. It's your baffling entitlement to call anything and everything Lolita when it's obviously not. Go get a goddamn hobby. Maybe you can take up screen printing and make a shirt that properly identifies you as God's gift to gutless wonders. Needless cruelty, sure, but you've caught me at a bad time to be a dimwit. What with the world on fire and closet of frills encouraging blouseless cohorts, proving that group still has some dignity left to set ablaze. Meaning I have run out of fucks to give you. That's all the time we have for tonight. And before you scrub your brain of the absolute bullshit I put before your eyes, I would like to thank my patrons for being the sole divide between myself and the madness of complete and utter isolation. And should you like to join their number in hopes of watching my sanity snap like a twig to startling effect, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for more content that should have been excised from polite society. Wishing you all the best as we try not to murder whoever's nearby. Thanks again guys, and I'll catch you next time. First, I'm surprised any of you are still here. Second off, let's talk about how weird it is that I have a better set.
than John fucking Oliver right now. This is a weird time for me to be alive. He's in the white void, as he says, but it is a weird time to be alive when you have a better set than an HBO show. I mean, Bill Maher's in his fucking backyard. I don't know what's going on out there. John Oliver's in a fracking sea of seminal fluid. It's weird out there. It's wild out there right now. And I know it's only because of you guys that I have a more interesting set than a front-running HBO show. But this is weird for me. I'm one part proud and one part concerned. It's just, it's weird. It's a weird time to be alive. I just wanted to say, it feels weird. It does.